Somebody shout amen. Turn around and high five somebody and bless somebody before you're seated. Hallelujah. I'm going to get Pastor Tony to introduce me everywhere I go. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I struggle with coming up here and preaching tonight because uh, it's, I've, I've been in a, many of the IPHC conferences and uh, you know I've been in a lot of independent circles, but this just may be my favorite place here tonight. You guys are free, man. I don't feel any spirit of religion on y'all. Y'all are free. Hallelujah. <laughs> I traveled when I first started in minute. Well, when I first started really full, full time ministry, I traveled with an evangelist and uh, he said something that I thought, I don't know that I'm there, but as the years have progressed, I'm getting there. He said, I would rather worship than preach. Let that challenge some of you preachers. But when you get lost in his presence, there's nothing better, man. There's nothing better. And you guys have been there. We're there right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's my honor to be here and speak to the Acts Today conference. And uh, I I'm humbled by this. So many of y'all could have uh, done a phenomenal job. I'm just, I'm just humbled at this. Thank you, Pastor G. Thank you, Bishop Gary Bryant, one of the greatest leaders I've ever worked with in my life. Come on, let's give it up for these, these leaders. Amen. I, came, I come from an independent, non-denominational background, and uh, I was introduced to the International Pentecostal Holiness Church through Trey Jones and a few young graduates from Emmanuel College. And then I met a, uh, a professor named Vincent Sinan who became a real influence in my life. And so they connected me with the local conference in Virginia, and I went to the first meeting ever, and Gary Bryant was in that meeting. It was a prayer meeting with the, the Hill family, J.J. Hill and Randy Hill at that Randy's church. And that was my first exposure to the IPHC, and it's been a blessing to be part of this. But it's good to meet you guys from Hawaii, Alaska, New York, uh, the Northeastern states, man, Detroit. Come on, it's just, it's a blessing to be in this crowd tonight, amen? My Montana brothers and sisters, hallelujah. I just, yeah, just look around and say, I I'm glad you got to sit near me tonight. Come on, just tell somebody, I'm glad you're near me tonight. I want to preach, I know you guys have been going all day and I'm, I'm not a long-winded preacher really, but I want to leave you with something that maybe we can, uh, I know you have a day tomorrow, but uh, for some of you leaving and I know things will close down tomorrow, so I just want to leave you with a word I hope encourages you. That's been my whole prayer since I've been here. Lord, just let me encourage these folks. These folks that have been through it, these folks of church planners, I was a church planner for nine years, I know it's not easy work, and so I encourage all of you. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Amen? That's what we learned last night. Well, tonight I want to dig into another psalm and give us maybe another theological reason why we should continue. We should keep going. I'm going to drop a big theological concept on you, and it's super simple. Okay? Open with me to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. I'm going to talk about the goodness of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, somebody say surely. Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can we say amen? amen. The 23rd Psalm is the most famous Psalm in all the Psalter, right? Most of us probably heard it as a child, even if you weren't raised in church. I wasn't raised in church and it's still familiar to me. It's the most quoted and most memorized of all the Psalms. St. Augustine in the fourth century called it the martyr's hymn because so many Christian martyrs recited it while they were being killed. Abraham Lincoln referred to this Psalm during the darkest days of the Civil War. George W. Bush quoted this Psalm to the nation after 9-11 and it's often read at grave sites and funerals and it's often considered you know a funeral psalm but it's not about death at all it's about life and really it answers the two biggest issues in life one is will we have enough food and water to drink and the other is will we be, will we be protected from our enemies so the psalm is really given to us to evoke trust in the Lord. It carries us to the top of the hill so we can see the vista and the sunrise of God's goodness. It's really a psalm about his goodness. Often the psalms contain a complaint and then a prayer and then sometimes a declaration of hope. Psalm 23 doesn't contain it. It's one solid declaration of the faithfulness and goodness of God. It contains three vignettes in it. And these are huge. These are important. I never saw the psalm this way, but I want you to hear me out tonight. It contains three vignettes. The first is of a shepherd. A shepherd who watches his flock and who takes care of his sheep. But then the imagery shifts and we're taken to a different vignette and this is of a weary traveler finding refuge in the tent of a Middle Eastern or ancient Near Eastern sheikh. And then the final vignette is of a worshiper standing in the tabernacle of God worshiping. It's good to be a sheep in his sheepfold. It's maybe better to be a protected guest in the tent of the Lord. But it's the best to be standing on Mount Zion worshiping him face to face. That's where this psalm takes you. It's an ascent of imagery that takes you to the mountaintop and shows us the most important thing is really to be doing what we just were doing in his presence, worshiping him. Come on, can somebody say amen? Even missions can be looked, looked at through those lenses that really what we're doing in missions or in church planning or in Acts Today in the four corners of America is we're calling the people and calling the nations to worship the God that they should have been worshiping all along. Oh, how, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say a sheep, a guest, and a worshiper. So the scholars tell us that this psalm was probably quoted as a royal psalm in, in subsequent years after King David wrote it, that it would be read in the temple courts or outside of the temple by the king to the guests who would come to the festivals in Israel. And it was a reminder of the goodness of God and of the faithfulness of God. So let me take my time and just kind of break it down and take you on a path of God's goodness so we can leave here hopefully shouting going back to our field of, of mission realizing God's for us 
and God's good. Can somebody shout amen? First of all, we see in this psalm that God provides. Somebody say, God provides. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a bold statement. The term shepherd is a royal metaphor used of kings in the ancient Near East, and we know if we're talking of God as our shepherd, we know it's a kingdom term. That he's really the one who's ruling over everything. And God ruled over Israel, and they used the term shepherd for the Lord throughout the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 2.7. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand, and he knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord has been with you and you have lacked nothing. Think about that. When Israel was coming through the wilderness for 40 years, the Lord could declare you lacked nothing without Walmart, no Hobby Lobby, no TJ Maxx. They lacked nothing. Nehemiah 9.21, 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing, their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. 40 years with the same pair of clothes, the same pair of shoes or sandals, and you never had swelling feet though you're walking through the desert. Come on somebody. How many can say, my God provides? The psalmist can say, I have no lack. God is consistently taking care of me. It's not just that he's providing, it's he's extravagantly providing. And this is what the psalmist talks about. And then it comes out in these, this imagery. He said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. And, and the imagery isn't, he just, he, he doesn't say he leads me to a patch of grass here and a patch of grass over here. But no, he leads me to these lush pastures and it's so much that I can get down and roll around in it. He leads me to a place of abundance. I'm gonna tell you by the Spirit of the Lord, I felt this during worship, to declare prosperity over Acts, oh, Acts 2. I don't know, it's weird for me and I don't do that kind of thing, but if you believe it, raise your hand and receive it. I just believe God wants to pour out extravagant abundance in your place of ministry. I don't know, somebody shout amen. amen. He makes me lie down in green pastures and then he leads me beside the still waters and the term here is, and the imagery really isn't, a, isn't like there's these rushing cascading waters because they really don't have that in the Middle East. The term really is dealing with restfulness, that he leads me to a place of calm and a place of restfulness. Why? Because he abundantly cares for me. And then he restores my soul. And the term soul here really is dealing with desires, the appetites of the human soul. I think it's restoring vision could it be he's doing that with you here in these couple days? He's let, leading you beside some still water so that vision gets reignited and refired. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's dealing with his faithfulness. Exodus 15, 13, you and your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed and you've guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. He's leading us for his cause into righteousness and faithfulness. And then verse four, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though we go through the canyons that are treacherous, I will fear no evil. Why? Because my shepherd's walking with me. And my shepherd has the staff, he has the crook, he can pull me out of the ravines. He has, when I'm not moving, he can poke me with the end of it. He can, he can correct me or he can save me at the same stroke. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can we just raise our hands and thank God that he provides? Thank God that he provides, he provides, he provides. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A few years ago, 
uh, we were challenged. We had an opportunity to give uh, money to a certain mission project on the mission field, and we support missions big anyhow. And we're a church that's planning churches, and we're into all that. But this year, we just really felt to uh, sow into a certain need in Ecuador. And so we, we, we sat down and we thought, you know, we could give $10,000 or we could give $20,000. And, and I have an administrative pastor that's so tight, he squeaks when he walks. <laughs> and, he's, he, 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 and he's like, Pastor, I don't know. You know, I can do this. He's checking all the finances. And then I'm getting ready to have a board meeting. And we're going to talk about this. And he calls me on the phone one night. I said, hey, buddy. He said, you're never going to believe this. He said, but I know where we can get $150,000 out of our budget. We can, we can cut it and carve it, and we can get $150,000 out. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? He said, no. So you know what we did? We sold $150,000 to this one project and just said, Lord bless you guys. It was only a short period of time, maybe a couple months after that. I had a pastor in my local area uh, request a meeting with me he came into my office and sat down and I didn't know what he was going to talk about I thought maybe he's having marriage problems or maybe he's having physical maybe his ministry's in trouble but he sat down and he pulled out a piece of paper and it was a real estate piece of paper and he placed it before me and he said this is a church that I built years ago it's a Baptist church I got filled with the Holy Ghost one day by myself at the altar and I had to leave the Baptist church not long after that. And after I left, the church went down to nothing. It's in foreclosure, and I can't get it out of my mind. The Lord says, come and place it before you. 22,000 square feet, beautiful, for $300,000. We bought it with cash, renovated it, and planted a church 40 minutes from our location. Thank God, can somebody shout amen? amen? But you will never convince me that it wasn't because my church sowed $150,000 to Ecuador. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, why? Because my God works like that. When we release what's in our hands, he comes and gives us what we couldn't think up on our own. Come on, somebody raise your hand and say, thank God he provides. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, raise your hand if you need God to provide right now in your ministry. We just thank God that he's gonna provide what you need to do the outreach you need in your town or your city. Hallelujah, somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, somebody say, my God provides. The second issue in this text is about God protecting. The imagery changes now from a shepherd with his sheep and the imagery really goes to a person who's walking through the desert, who's thirsty and hungry and weary. And maybe he has marauders or bandits on his tail and he finds this, this set of tents laid out maybe in a Bedouin camp and there's a, a chief sheikh there who has his guys that can ride camels and pull out swords and he's got a wealth and abundance there and this weary traveler finds his way into the tent of this sheikh and all of a sudden his mind is blown but because before him is a smorgasbord of food he sets a cup on the table and he pours it till it overflows and the sheikh says, if anybody's causing you trouble, don't worry, my men's on it right now. You're protected in my presence. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My, you anoint my head with oil. He's blessing his guest. And my cup runs over. This is what God does for us. Not only does he provide for us, he protects us when we're in the center of his will. Oh, can somebody shout hallelujah? And he just does some amazing things for us and blesses us as we go along. And what's crazy and what's beautiful about this as he does it in the presence of our enemies. Because God
God's into showing off his people to the kingdom of the enemy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I, I, last year I went through some struggles and I may talk about it just in a minute, but uh, I, the book of Job became a great consolation to me. And the book of Job really is about God putting on display a man before Satan and his company. And he says, Satan has a low view of humanity. Satan says, this guy will never serve you. You take away all his goods, he'll deny you. God said, go ahead and do it. He took away everything he had, and guess what? Job said, I'm not gonna bow. I'm not gonna serve you. He was like the three Hebrew boys. I, we're not gonna bow down to your dumb idol whether God delivers us or not. We're still not gonna worship you. And then Satan comes back and says, well, if you take his health, then he'll surely curse you. God said, go ahead, but you can't kill him. So it happened, and guess what happened? Job came down to the point after he lost his health and he lost everything else, he said, you know what? I know that my Redeemer lives and on the last day I'm gonna see him face to face, but I'm not bowing to you, you dumb devil. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And what God was doing, God wanted to bless him all along and he did bless him in the end, but what God was doing was he sh was showing all of the kingdom of the realm of Satan and his demons what a righteous man really looks like. And I think what God is doing with us is what Paul said in Ephesians 2. He's setting us on display before the kingdoms of darkness showing Satan this is what my church really looks like. It looks like a people that I'm bringing through COVID and I'm bringing through 2020 and I'm still having them on fire and they love me in the good times and they love me in the bad times. I'm blessing them and I'm protecting them. Oh, somebody raise your hand and shout, hallelujah. Glory to God. I may run around this building for the night's over. I may run down the highway if I feel any better. Come on, somebody say, God provides and God protects. And then we get to the sweet spot in this Psalm. And he says in verse six, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not only does God provide and God protect, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it this way, but he chases us down with his goodness and his mercy. Come on, I'm gonna say it again. He chases us down with his goodness and his mercy. He runs after us with goodness and mercy. Goodness simply tov in Hebrew and mercy, that beautiful term chesed, which is his, translated sometimes as his loving kindness. He runs after us with goodness. I don't know, sometimes we get in our mind, you know, especially being from a holiness background like I'm from, that God's constantly after me to catch me and beat me up. Or he's constantly after me to judge me and throw me in spiritual jail. And I still work through this, but you know, all the years I've served him and all the years I've preached, I'm constantly reminded and it's constantly confirmed to me that God actually loves me and he's actually for me, and he's trying to help me, and he's trying to bless me, and he's trying to make me a success in his work. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. I tell you, I can guarantee you God's trying to get your church to grow. God's trying to get your church to save some people. God's trying to get your children's ministry to be a success. God's trying to bless you in your city. I don't think he's against us, he's for us. Surely, somebody shout sure. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's good to be a sheep in his sheepfold. It's better to be a protected guest in his tent, but it's best to be in his temple worshiping him. Can somebody shout amen? goodness and mercy are following me. So in 2019, in the month of July, I was preaching a camp meeting in Tennessee. And after the camp meeting was over, I was ready to go home. My wife was with me, her name was Jackie. And we woke up and we were getting our goods together and getting stuff packed up, ready to go home. And my wife bent over double in pain. 
and uh, I started praying for her. We both started praying and the pain never subsided. It just got worse and worse. So I took her to an emergency room and we ended up spending 4th of July in the emergency room, not knowing what's going on. They did CAT scans and all kinds of stuff, everything you could imagine. They, con they discussed exploratory surgery, but, but didn't do it. I packed her up the next morning, brought her home, and over the next few months, we found out she had a large uh, abdominal tumor, and they removed it a few months later, and when the surgeon went in, he found it was ovarian cancer. And it was a very aggressive form of ovarian cancer. It was so aggressive that it didn't respond to chemotherapy. Uh, we did chemotherapy for a few months and then she started having other issues and they did a PET scan and realized the cancer just shot all through her. Lymph lymphatic system, spleen, lungs, it was all through her. So here we were, faith preachers. <laughs> Pentecostal holiness pastors. My wife had played piano in church since she was four she could have played for anyone she was gifted crazy gifted in in many different aspects of life had more faith than maybe anyone I've ever been around tenacious grew up under tent ministers A.A. A. Allen Oral Roberts been in the tent had hands laid on her and she started playing the organ with a great anointing after a man laid hands on her in a tent meeting one night had seen demons cast out by name, cancers coughed up by the root system and puked out in the floor in meetings. I'm talking, this was their life. And we're sitting here like, what's going on? We had everybody pray for us. We, I had friends fly and just sit with us and pray. Some of the greatest men of God I know, Gary Bryant and a prayer team consistently praying for us. Some of you guys came to me last night and said, we've been praying for you. I was so blown away by that. And then um, Ju June, July 2nd came last year and she passed away. And so I was like, you know, my world was rocked. And so all of these questions started coming. What are you gonna do now, Hans? Are you gonna preach anymore? Are you gonna pray for the sick now? You gonna believe in miracles anymore? Um, are you even gonna serve the Lord? I mean, I had, I'm being very transparent with you. I had all of these questions come at me. And I told the devil, I said, well, you know what? I was serving the Lord before I met Jackie. And I was baptized in the Holy Ghost before I met her. And I was called to preach before I met her. So yeah, I'm gonna do that thing. I'm going to do that that God called me to when I was 16. And I really got back to a sweet spot with the Lord. But it challenges the idea in your mind of God's goodness. It challenges the idea. God, are you really good? Are you really good? It challenges that idea. And I came to the point that where I had to say, I, I don't know. I don't know all the answers why. I'm going to figure it out when we get over yonder. But all I know is my God is still good. And my wife left here praising the Lord, not bitter, not nothing left on the table, clean slate. I mean, full of faith, declaring my body is the Lord's. Hallelujah. You've created me, God. I'm healed by your stripes. And that's the way she left this earth. I'd rather leave that way than bitter and upset and offended and all this. And then I came back, I took some time off from church and I came back and I preached to my congregation. They were rocked and I preached from Job. And I said, you know what? We don't have all the answers, but I know one thing, God's still God. God is still good. God's still for us. And we just went through a rough time. I don't understand it all. Not only that, did that happen, I lost uh, three members of my church that were prayer warriors. One guy on my prayer team, another lady from went to Brooklyn Tab Church, was in my church, and she was my front desk secretary, and another lady who was an outreach leader for me. They all died before my wife. Then after that, I was rear-ended at 60 miles an hour. My shoulder was dislocated. I was put in a the hospital. Then after that, in December, I finished the year by having COVID. 
I thought, okay, 2021 could not come quick enough for me. But the second Sunday, I came back to my church. I preached on some notes that my wife left. We didn't find them until she had passed, but she left these just faith notes, man. I mean, she was a faith woman. She left just these faith notes, and the last... The last sentence she wrote was this. What happens when the doctors tell you there's no hope? She said, well, my faith wasn't in those guys anyhow. Come on, somebody. And I came back that next Sunday, and at the end, I said, I want to pray for anybody who needs healing in their body. And three ladies came forward. One was diagnosed with breast cancer. The other one was some other form of cancer. And I walked to the second lady, and I said, what have you been diagnosed with? She said, they think I have ovarian cancer. And I backed up. And I thought, this is a test from the Lord. Am I going to back away from this or am I going to be a man of God that God's called me to be and still believe in his goodness and pray for this lady who's in need right now? And I stepped back up and I laid hands on her and our whole congregation. It was like electric, electric that morning and that the power of God was there ministering. I just felt it was just like a, a test. Am I going to pray anymore? Am I going to believe anymore? See, when you walk through things, you have to back up. Had I not had a theology that God was good, I would have checked out. Had I not believed in my heart and studied scripture long enough to know that ultimately God is good, I would have said, what is this all about? But I know in the end, God has the last say. And I know in the end that the goal of our faith isn't found in this life. The goal of our faith is to see him face to face. And my wife attained the goal of our faith. I believe in healing as much as I ever had. But I'm telling you, God is good. He's good to me now. Now, and when I get over to the other side, I'm going to meet her again, and it's going to be real good. Come on, can somebody shout hallelujah? God's for you. He's not against you. The reason we encounter stuff is because we're in a fallen world with a real devil who's really coming against us. But God, as Tim Keller said, God has walked onto the bomb site. And he's coming to search us out and to seek us out and to walk with us through this life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Come on, somebody shout, my God is good. My, good, my God is good all the time. Joseph said in Genesis 50 to his brothers, he said, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this day to save many people. If you read the book of Lamentations, it gets to a certain point in chapter two where the writer we think is Jeremiah and Jeremiah is so distraught. He gave the word of the Lord to Jer uh, Jerusalem and Judea and God brought judgment on the city and it got so bad for Jeremiah that he said, God, it's me you're punishing. I'm the one who's taking the blow and in the midst of all of this uh, arguing and 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 all of this pain he pivots and he says through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions they fail not they're new every morning great is your faithfulness the Lord is my portion says my soul therefore I hope in him the Lord is good to all those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him it is good that one should hope and wait on the Lord. Can somebody shout amen? amen? The psalmist said in Psalm 31, Oh God, how great is your goodness, which you've laid up for those who fear you, which you've prepared for those who trust you. Listen, you got to believe that God is good. He's good today. He's good tomorrow. He's good in November. He's good in December. He's good in 2022. We walk and we fight and we war, but God is for us. He died for us. He gave us the power of his Holy Spirit. He's given us a calling that we can't back up on you got to fulfill what God's called you to do and know he's for you all the way somebody give him a hand clap of praise and a shout in here tonight oh hallelujah 
Come on, punch your neighbor. Say, God is good all the time. God is good. Come on, all the time. You think about David who wrote this. He's declaring the goodness of God even though Saul tried to kill him. He's declaring the goodness of God even though he had to act as a madman one time. He's declaring the goodness of God even though he failed God miserably at one point. He's declaring the goodness of God even though his son Com, uh, committed complete uh, treason and Absalom took the kingdom away from him. He's committed to the goodness of God and the theology that God is good. God was good to me when I was against him. God was good to me when I was cursing him. God was good to me when I was running as hard as I could from, from him. God came and sought me out at my most rebellious point. He showed up in a hospital room one night and spoke to me and called me out of it and pick me up. Come on, somebody. The devil has come too late to tell me that my God isn't good and my God isn't for me. Come on, God's for you in New York City. God's for you in Oklahoma City. God's for you in Hawaii. Come on, God's for you way up in West Virginia. Come on, somebody. Come on, just shout it out. God's for me. Hallelujah. And if God's for me, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know what happened to me now since, since my wife passed? I've seen more miracles in the past year than I've ever seen in my entire ministry. More miracles. It's crazy. Not only in the U.S., but online. We're seeing every time I do a crusade online, it's the testimonies coming back are mind-boggling. People who couldn't walk are walking out of the meetings. People whose heads were swelled has come back to normal size and they're leaving the meetings. People who were oppressed with demons are coming out free and delivered out of the meetings. Absolutely mind-blowing. God showed up in our church. I came back and I told my church, I said, you know what? I don't want to see a whiteboard for a while. I know we got to get back there. We got to have strategy and all that. But right now, all I want is his presence. That's all I want right now. I just want back in his presence. I long to be where David is at the end of this chapter. I just want to be in the presence of the Lord. That's where the fullness of joy is. And we started just worshiping. I started preaching with all of my heart. And God started showing up and doing amazing things. We just received 21 new members two weeks ago. Hallelujah. We started seeing people get saved. Pentecost Sunday, almost everyone who came to the altar was baptized in the Holy Ghost. We had riots happen in my town because an African-American man was killed by a local police officer. It was a terrible situation. And so they were rioting in my town and, and rioting. And then our church got caught up in the whole shebang. And we had Al Sharpton come. And we had all these people come to my church. Long story, I'm not going to get into it but right after that time we set a tent on my property and had up, up to 700 people a night coming under the tent and we sent out witnessing teams into the streets and as the protesters were protesting the witnessing teams went in among the protesters and they said man we need your word why don't you hand out your flyers to the revival to everyone in this protest today and not only that they met the leader of the protest in a hotel parking lot gave him some food and drink and led him to Jesus in the parking lot. You're not going to hear that on CNN, but at least our city didn't burn to the ground. Hallelujah. Why? Because it was met with some love and some Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on. I believe God is loose in America right now. I know the days look dark, but the glory is going to be greater and greater and greater on the church. Even, I don't know what we're going through in the next few years, but I know the glory is getting thick because the goodness of God is hovering over his people. Come on, somebody. Stand on your feet and give him a shout and give him some praise in here tonight. Come on, I declare the goodness of the Lord in your ministry, in your life, on your family, in your location hallelujah in your city Come on, high five two or three people tell them it's coming on you tonight oh hallelujah 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 come on hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just go ahead and stand. Raise your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The psalmist is coming and he's getting to that ultimate place which is, Lord, what we're really wanting is to stand before you in the temple, God. You brought us through some difficult times. You brought us through some good times. But all of it makes sense when we get in your glory. All of it makes sense when we get in your presence, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, you pastors, lift your hands. I pray glory on your churches. Come on, I pray a tangible glory, presence of the Lord like you've never experienced it on all of our churches when we leave here. Just because we came, just because we opened our hearts. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and in Anaconda, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, everybody pray it. Come on, everybody pray it. New Hampshire. Glory of God in New Hampshire, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory coming on his church, in his community, in the name of Jesus. What's the name of your town? Jaffrey, New Hampshire. And that's what God glory on that town in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God glory on New York City, Lord. Glory on New York City like never before. Glory on New York City, God, in the name of Jesus. Glory in Bogota, God, in the name of Jesus. Glory, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, pray with me tonight, church. Glory in Michigan. Glory in Detroit, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. No more dry season, brother. No more dry season. Goodness, faithfulness, prosperity coming of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Washington, D.C., we declare the glory of God over all that area. Over Maryland, God, all the way up the coast that Brother Abel's over. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're Phoenix, Phoenix, oh, glory in Phoenix, God, in the name of Jesus. Glory, God, hallelujah, glory over the Hispanic movement in America, God. You've raised them up, God. You brought them to our shores to set this nation on fire in the name of Jesus. More glory, more glory. Connecticut. Connecticut, glory on Connecticut, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody praying with me tonight. I have a friend who's committed to revival in all the New England states. In the name of Jesus, let it happen, God. Let it happen, God. Come on, glory in Oklahoma City. Glory in Oklahoma City in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody say stir it up, Lord. Come on, stir it up, Lord. Stir it up, Lord. I, I, from Hawaii. You're from Hawaii. Come on, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, all the Hawaii delegation here. God, we pray for glory to come on Hawaii, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holly, there's great darkness in the islands. Like I see great darkness and you're like a light cutting through it, cutting right through it. In the name of Jesus. You know, I hear the Lord say, be not weary and well doing. Keep, keep plowing, keep preaching, keep being faithful. You're gonna reap in due season if you faint not. God brought you here for a purpose, brother. This isn't just by coincidence. Come on, raise your hands and receive his glory right now. Now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, come on, Brother Carlos, lay hands on him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, there's a wind blowing over Hawaii. Hallelujah, there's a wind blowing. Come on, Montana, in the name of Jesus, God, I love this state. I just declare glory in Helena, God. Glory in Butte, Montana, God. Glory in Victor, Montana, God. Glory in 
Anaconda, Montana, God. All the four corners, God. Through the Indian reservations, God. All the way up to the mountains in the north, God. To the Yellowstone in the south, God. Fresh wind over that state. And come on, y'all pull it down for them tonight, church. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, brother, I see revival coming to Butte, Montana. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 14 years. God, in the name of Jesus, let all the plowing these men have done, let, let them come back with joy. Let them come back with sheaves. Let them come back with the fruit for all the years they've been plowing, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, everybody, pray it with me tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You're on Mount. Yes. Father, I thank you for Maui, Lord. I thank you for fresh glory coming on Maui, God. Thank you for signs and wonders and miracles coming to Maui, God. Thank you for joy coming to Maui, God. In the name of Jesus. Let your great, let their greatest years be ahead of them, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I pray for West Virginia. Come up where my grandparents came from. I pray a greater weight of glory, God, coming into West Virginia, Lord. In the name of Jesus, great men and women come out of that state and greater to come. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise for it right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mesa, Arizona. Come on, Arizona. Come on, in the name of Jesus. I pray fresh glory, God, on Brother William right now. From Mesa, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know, brother, I feel like you've seen the move of God before. But I just feel to tell you this, that another one's coming. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Fill him up, God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, shout his goodness is on me tonight. Come on, his faithfulness is on me tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are you guys from? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Come on, Oklahoma City. In the name of Jesus. God, send revival to Oklahoma City, Lord. Send revival to Oklahoma City, God. Ah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. In the heartland, in the middle of America, God. Send revival, God. Giants have come out of Oklahoma. God, let it happen again in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Maine, you guys are from Maine, right? Father, in the name of Jesus. I know some great evangelists from Maine. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it happen. Let it happen to the wings, God, in Jesus' name. Yet let them all shout us pray. Glory on Maine, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus. Glory on Maine, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Come on, my brother from Alaska. We're going to pray. Come on, we're going to pray for Alaska right now in the name of Jesus. Rhode Island, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Alaska, God. I pray for glory to come on that state, God. Great move of God to come on that state, Father. In the name of Jesus. Let my brother be a vessel of your glory, carrying back revival, Lord. In the name of Jesus. On Rhode Island, God. In the name of Jesus. Let glory come on Rhode Island, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Glory coming on Rhode Island. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
in Hawaii. Father in Hawaii, oh hallelujah. On my brother and his sister, God. Lord, on all their churches, on the Philippines, God. Let the glory of God come like they've never seen it before, Lord, I pray. There's an apostolic anointing on you. Hallelujah. God, thank you for the anointing on my brother, Lord. I give you praise, God, that he carries the glory with him. Now, God, let him spill it out. Let the latter days of his life be more productive. And let more glory be on it than any other time in his life, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Guillermo. Come on. Hallelujah, God. We just lift up every district right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray, Lord, that we will have an effectual door in this season, Father, that we would begin to walk through, Father, that we would not waste time, that, that we would not grow weary, Father God, but we pray for boldness in this season, Father, to stand up knowing that you are with us and that you are for us, Father God, that you are our great provider, that you are our great protector, Father. We stand on your promises and we believe, my God, that the best is yet to come come on declare the best is yet to come the best is yet to come father we remind you of every prophetic word that has been spoken over us my god we remind you god that you called us the tip of the spear my god we remind you my god that you have called us my god to go where others won't dare to go my god you have called us father god with an apostolic mantle in this season we declare god that you are with us that you are for us my god you prepared the way my god you've equipped us You've, you've given us all the resources we need, my God. And today, we grab onto the mantle of the heaven. And we say, here we are, Lord. Send us. Send us. Send us. Send us. Send us, oh God. Send us, oh God. Send us, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Come on, give them your highest praise. Don't grow weary. Don't grow weary. Hallelujah. Robo 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 we remove the muzzle over your mouths in this place in the name of Jesus. That, uh, that attack that the enemy tried to bring against you to distract you and to tear you down, we strike it down now in the name of Jesus. We send you Satan to the feet of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for healing of mind, healing of body in this place. And those things that the enemy has sent to destroy you well, did nothing but build you up, did nothing but set you up. Those things that were, that were put in place as a setback, they were nothing more than a setback. Uh, we thank you God that the best is yet to come we thank you God that there are greater signs and greater miracles yet to come we thank you God that we will plant churches God we thank you God that we will build up pastors God we thank you God that we will send out people my God we thank you God that we will reap where we have not sown hey we will reap where we have not sown in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. robo just all over this place begin to pray in the spirit just begin to pray in the spirit all over this place lord hear our cry oh god hear our cry oh god hear our cry oh god we break down the tough soil of New England. We break down the tough soil of the Northwest. We break down the tough soil in the Midwest. We break down the tough soil. We break down the tough soil in areas where we've had difficult times planting. God is saying that this is the time now to break up the soil. Break it up. Break it up. Break it up. Break it up. Break it up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We pray for our brother, Pastor Hans. Yo, come on, just point your hands this way. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, God. 
that as he is imparted and invested into us my God may you bring it into his life tenfold in the name of Jesus God that you would bring blow prophetic winds in his direction my God that you would increase every anointing in his life my God in the name of Jesus may he receive fresh revelations of the word may he not do things moving forward as he has done in the past my God that you would give him a freshness my God that you would not give him a renewing but that you would give him a newness oh God hallelujah Lord break his heart for what breaks yours in the name of Jesus God mend every place in his life my God mend every place my God send him God he's willing to go send him oh God God give him the boldness to say the things that others are not willing to say God give him the boldness to go where others are not willing to go God Lord your word shows us that if you could get it through us then you'll get it to us my God he's been been good uh, a, a good steward over what you've put into his hand and so we declare God that you will continue to pour it in him so it can go through him my God we pray God right now over his apostolic mantle in the name of Jesus oh God hallelujah may he be a father to many in the name of Jesus and in the area where the enemy tried to destroy him may he head, just just go towards that head on that and show the enemy that he cannot be broke down that he cannot be torn down because greater is he that is in him than he that is in the world I'll remind you what you have told us and spoken to us last night. You have sowed in tears and you will reap a great reward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can we just celebrate in this place and just give God a praise? God, we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do, God. We thank you in advance for all. Don't pity pat God. God doesn't need a favor of your pity pat. But God, we just, we just stand and we celebrate, God. And we just thank you in advance for all that you're going to do, God. Lord, we look at Arise 2033 and we think to ourselves, how in the world? But God, to the heavens, that's nothing more than just a blink of an eye. God, your Proverbs show us that, that, that we are so simple-minded that you want to do so much more through us that we even dare to believe, God. So God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that all that was imparted into us in these two days, God, that it would not fall on a deaf ear, that it would not just be something that we heard, my God, but that it would serve as an activation that we would engage with the heavens in partnership to do all that you have called us to do, Father God. And in the end, God, it is not us doing it, God, it is you. God, you, you pick out people that are least likely to succeed. <laughs> you pick out the least likely to accomplish. You pick from the bottom of the barrel, God, and you dust us off and you say, these are the ones that I can use. And through that, only you will get the glory, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the strong name of Jesus, in the strong name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you? in spite of sometimes we can remember the bad for sure but I dare you to remember all that God has done for you and how he has turned a mess into a message many times in your life hallelujah God Whew. See, it's times like this where you just want to stay in his presence. Hallelujah, God. Trevor, could you do us a favor, sir? Can you come?
I know that you know the prophetic gifted and calling on your life and many times you get into environments and I see you take the back seat and almost as you feel like you wouldn't be heard and so as we close out today I want you to pray us out in the name of Jesus will you do that thank you father come on just lift your hands up all over this place father right now in Jesus name we send a fire a God an all-consuming fire Father, not an orange fire that just burns on the surface, but a blue fire that burns underneath. The hottest part of the fire, God. Father, I decree and declare over every single warrior that's in this place that their swords are sharpened. Their bows are sharpened, God. That wherever they go, they're going to spread that revival fire in their church, out of their church, in their families, out of their families, God. Lord, that you're going to burn in their hearts a passion for your name that cannot be contained. God, that you would flow like a river out of each and every one of them now, in Jesus' name. Then, Lord, we're going to see in 2022 some of the greatest movements of God coming out of Acts today, in Jesus' name. God, we're going to see an eruption like a volcano that cannot be contained, God, beginning to spread across the U.S. and beyond because of the fire that is inside of these people right now, in Jesus' name. God, I decree they won't relent they're not going to back down but God they're going to run their race and they're going to finish it well we give you glory for this right now God in Jesus mighty name amen